Hi there, Matthew Hill from Hill and Ponson for another weekly Q&A session. Looking forward to uh, getting y'all's questions and hopefully uh, giving you some help in the direction of your uh, case. Um, so I think uh, we're waiting. Let's see, a couple minutes here before we get everybody on. Um, unfortunately, it's just me. Um, Carol Ponton is out this week. Uh oh, we get a bad, hopefully that's better. Maybe it's this, hold on a second. Video looks a little fuzzy. <clears throat> okay, I think that's better. All right, so yeah, Carol Ponton is out this week, and so it's just me. So hopefully we'll uh, still be able to help you on some chats here. Um, all right, let's see. Am I missing the chat screen? Store chat. Okay. All right, uh, and I don't have anything pre-prepared really. Uh, other than I will say, I know this is going to come up uh, several times, but I will say that next week we get to uh, hear the, the the chairman of the BBA herself and hopefully get some answers as far as turnaround time. I'm very excited about hearing that. And then we'll also, I'll also get to hear from the uh, regional office or the VA benefits director about what's going on there and uh, how things are going. Uh, Alan, if you're on, I'm not getting any chats. Uh, if I did something wrong or missed something. Um, let's see. So if you all have chatted me, I apologize. Um, all right. Starting to get them now. Okay, great. Um, so let's see. Just overall, we are uh, all right. I'm getting the chats now. Um, that's great. Overall, this is the end of the VA fiscal year the end of this month. And so hopefully you all are seeing movement in your cases. We've had mixed results. We have had some cases that are waiting for a while finally get decided. You know, it's not necessarily a good decision, but it's just a decision one way or the other, which, which, you know, eh, which I say is I'd rather just keep the case going forward. Um, but hopefully uh, you guys get some, some, uh, some time, <laughs> sorry, these, uh, y'all are distracting me here with, with the notifications or with the, with the chats, but hopefully you all get something this month. I would strongly encourage you if you've been waiting a while to, to reach out to the VA, to find a email, to find a number, to write, I mean, a fax at this point, say, Hey, give me an update on my case. Hopefully that would bring it to the top of their attention, top of their pile. And you could get, uh, you know, you get something done there. So, all right, let's see. <clears throat> We got battle jurist, best advice for filing a hyperthyroid claim from service at Fort McClendon in 95. 95 is kind of hard because <clears throat> cause I think both the, uh, what is it called, Environmental Protection Agency and the DOD said it was cleaned up, meaning like they had no more herbicides that were used there. I, I tend to doubt that. Um, I would submit all that evidence that we put up with our videos on Fort McClendon. I would also say that, um, I would also say that it's 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 a kind of a juxtaposition you can make in that even though the VA excuse me even though the DOD in Project Ranch Hand back in Vietnam stopped spraying I think in seventy one maybe seventy two they admitted that vets were exposed at least until seventy five and they and they ended it at seventy five because that's when we were out of there so that's what I'd consider doing uh, the information we put out on Fort McClellan basically shows that it's the herbicides that were used there were the same thing as Agent Orange so hopefully that would get you. Uh, the presumptive service connection there. All right. Uh, let's see. I think I missed a couple. Medmundo. Yeah, Medmundo. I've recently submitted a claim for lower back pain, secondary to bilateral knee instability. VA has sent me to a physical therapist and chiropractor for treatment. My, my CMP exam is in November. What I would consider doing is if you get to go to that PT or the chiropractor again, I would ask them, say, hey, look, uh, I, I have this, this, uh, knee pain, uh, do you think it could cause my back pain? And if they say yes, say, could you please put that in your notes? Um, Tom, Anita Wilson, I'm going to answer this question again at the end. Are judges moving forward? I, I'll have more information about that, or at least um, hopefully. But I, I make sure I, I talk about that again at the end, because I just spoke at the beginning. Scott, I'm currently 80%. I don't know if you could get me to 100%. What odds, what are the odds that you might be able to get me to unemployability? Well, <clears throat> Are you not working? If you're not working, is it due to this, these combination of disabilities? 
If so, then you should get disability. You should get total disability due to uh, individual unemployability. Now, uh, even if you are working, is it a sheltered employment or are you making under the poverty line, which I think is about thirteen thousand dollars now? So those are those are options there. But if you're at eighty percent and you're not working, you have a very good chance. Um, let's see, Lauren G. Is vocational assessment helpful for TIU added to the BVA claim in the evidence submission line? So that's two different things there. Is it helpful? Yes. And what we do when we get vocational <laughs> experts to look at our file, we almost always just get them to look at the CMP exams and statements from the vets. CMP exams, what, one of the most frustrating things I see is that if you have four different disabilities, you're saying I'm unemployable, I'll send you to four different CMP exams. And that CMP examiner will say, well, because of his knees, he can't stand for more than 15 minutes, but he could do sedentary work. And then he'll send you somebody for tinnitus or hearing loss. They'll say, well, because of his hearing loss, he probably has to you know, have accommodations for hearing loss. And then they'll send somebody to a PTSD exam and say, well, because of the PTSD, he has to be isolated and can't walk around. Well, they don't talk about it in conjunction. They don't, they don't come together and say, well, with all these disabilities, would he be able to work? So that's what a vocational expert will do. And we've had tremendous success in this is that we just take each CMP examiner and then put all those disabilities together and show what problems that would cause at work. And so that, I, I, I don't think you could do better if you have multiple, uh, frankly, we, we always use those if it's multiple disabilities. And, and when you use the VA's CMP examiner's language against them, mm, like it's hard for them to, to overturn. Uh, so yeah, in, in a you know, I would send that to the BBA. I think that's great in the submission line. <clears throat> um, Medmundo, yes, uh, those chiropractor and PT things could help. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Jim Lester, you got 10% for tinnitus. Can you get secondary migraines with that? Yes, you can. You have to show that basically the migraine started after the the tinnitus, and that maybe they have their onset on a weekly, daily basis, uh, you know, when you're, when you have the ringing getting louder, but you certainly can. Cook, don't. <laughs> Who can I contact to start a claim, Fresno VA? I would go to the VA Medical Center itself, or if you know where the American Legion is, or DA, DAV, or, um, you know, any of those uh, veteran service organizations, they can help you not only not only um, put it together, but they submit it electronically, which makes it go a lot faster. That, that's who I would go with. Noah, is writing a book screenplay covered under protected income in regards to IU? That's tough. Um, what I would say to that is if you're writing it for someone else, meaning somebody hired you to write it and you got to work under their hours and their deadlines, that, that could be considered um, employment. If you're writing it on your own, whenever you want, however you want, stopping when you want, starting when you want, going as long as you want, that's at the most, that is uh, a, a business that you run and, and, and you've basically sheltered yourself because you give yourself the hour. So that would not matter. Michael, how long should I wait for a lawyer to review my C file and file a claim after hiring them? Uh, so a couple things there. I would never hire an attorney, never hire me, uh, unless you've already had at least one claim that you put in and was denied because the VA is supposed to to make that claim uh, happen for you and that they have a duty to assist. Um, you shouldn't be paying for that. So I, I, if you've not filed a claim, I would, uh, I'd not be, I'd not, I would not be hiring an attorney. And even if you hired an attorney, depending on the claim and where it is and how it's going, you probably shouldn't have to pay them. Now, as far as how long should you wait? I got to tell you, for me, this varies a lot. And we tell our vets it's going to be anywhere from six to nine months for us to get the C file. The VA has been ridiculously slow for that for the whole time I've been doing this. I don't, um, you know, I don't file claims, but, but I look to pursue uh, appeal claims, appealed, or I, sorry, I look to appeal claims. Most of the time I'm able to appeal those before I get the file. But now with this new setup, I can't appeal until I have the evidence going into the BVA. Um, so, you know, while I'm waiting, I have nothing substantive to tell my vets. And so, you know, sometimes there's some frustration on their part, but we try to be honest up front and say, hey, look, we can't control the timeframes of this process. So I would, you know, nine months is, is what I'd wait. And then I'd start saying, hey, where are we? But um, the more important thing to me is you shouldn't 
an attorney shouldn't be filing a claim and collecting a fee for you. You should be filing that claim and anything you win, you take the whole thing. All right. William, 66 years old, I'm thinking. 70% time for unemployability. Yes, you should file a claim for that if you're 70%. <clears throat> I think you might have put something further down here. I just don't see it. Um, but yes, file a claim. Uh, remember that age has nothing to do with it. I've got vets, World War II vets who are in their 90s who we file uh, unemployability for. And the important thing is, it's you know, some people, some vets think, oh, that's greedy for me to do it. I could see that. But the VA itself in its regulation states, age is not to be considered when con determining unemployability. So I would file that. Uh, and again, that's something you could file with yourself or, or get a veteran service officer to help you. Alonzo, can I file secondary claim off of two diagnoses, sleep apnea, secondary to asthma and PTSD? Yes. And, uh, you know, you'll probably get it only under one, but I'd file it. I'd file it like that to get, you know, what you deserve. Law dog, oh one, 30% for migraines. Can depression be a secondary for migraines or should I seek a higher percentage? Yes. And yes, depression is a, there's so many cases I see where a vet maxes out uh, spine, you know, lumbar spine, it's really hard to get more than a 20% because their rating code is ridiculous. But I see plenty of vets who are rating rated at 20%, don't have a job, have totally lost their identity and are extremely depressed and are not treating for it and do not know it. Well, the crazy thing is, is you can get a much higher rating for depression. I'm not going to say it's easier, but the symptoms are, you, you know, it looks at you subjectively versus like the crazy orthopedic regs that just want to see how far forward or backwards you can bend. So I, I would definitely file that. As far as migraines, I, almost every single migraine case I've handled, the bet, the bet was extremely depressed because it destroys their life. They never know when they're going to get one. They never know how it's going to affect them. You know, they can't be counted on by family members or anything. So, so yeah, that, that, that is a huge one. And then if you're not working, I would look to make that an unemployability claim as well. Fritz, recently the BVA denied my claim for back pay. However, the deadline for appeal has passed. I currently have new evidence. What do you suggest? Hmm. There is no freestanding claim for, for retro benefits. So that is hard. Um, if you're in the new system, the AMA, you get a year to appeal. So I would do that. If you're not, you're honestly stuck with a Q claim, or if you can show that there's a prior claim that was open. Uh, but unfortunately, there is no claim for an earlier effective freestanding, meaning you just file that claim for an earlier effective date. You got to go through clear and unmistakable error or show that, hey, there was a claim back in 2002. You never gave me a decision on. So that, that's a tough one, Fritz. <clears throat> it's that time. Can 100% TDIU be changed, undone for any reason besides fraud? Also, is there a CMP exam for TDIU? Uh, so it can be changed. Uh, you know, they do this all the time. They shouldn't, but they'll take it away for, you know, uh, the, the reasons are all over the place, but it does happen. CMP exam for TDIU? Yes. If it's one disability, they, they definitely do it. If it's multiple disabilities, they'd ask the same question to each examiner of those. So if you have PTSD, they'd ask that examiner if you have ortho, if you have a migraine. So, so yes, you, you uh, can. Bill McGrath, why would they keep asking for IMO of my peripheral, neuro peripheral nerves, been at three exams for the same, doing another ACE exam for IMO for MD versus NP? I can't answer that for you. You know, Carol, who's not here, has some pretty strong opinions on basically they keep on sending them out, both the delay claims. And frankly, these examiners get paid every time they do a claim. We have not seen ACE uh, be that bad. Um, I, I just forgot the name of the other one, but, but, uh, we have seen another one in particular that, um, that, that's taken multiple exams. So with these out time examiners, maybe the doctor is not saying exactly what the, um, or answering the question that the, the adjudicator wants. So, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's definitely a guessing game and I, I try not to make you worry. Um, but I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Brian L. Okay. Sleep apnea. Is it higher level review? They said they have to verify a buddy statement. I've been diagnosed with TBI and get 50% for it, and I'm currently at 70%. Okay, Brian, let me see. Is there a follow-up on here? 
Um, okay. There's a question, Brian. I don't see it. Just kind of going down to the bottom. Uh, so that, that, you know, that, that's frustrating. They probably sent it back to, to, I don't really understand what the verify buddy statement is, but, um, yeah, I, I'd keep on going because if you get that, that's a 50% rating, um, which would get you up to about a 90% rating. And then if, again, if you're not working, uh, you could get up again to hundred percent. It's that time. 50% migraine headaches. Can I get TDIU? What makes a strong case first go around? Okay. So <clears throat> TDIU has two different types. There's the one most vets know, where if you have combined ratings that equal 70% with one rating being 40%, then you can get it from the regional office. Okay, the per first person you send it to can say, yes, you can't work, okay? It, or if you have a 60% rating all from one uh, disability or from one um, combination disability. So if you have orthopedic disabilities that, that combine to, to 60 or say diabetic, same thing to 60, you can get it that way. Okay. So that's 38 CFR 4.16A. Okay. 38 CFR 4.16A. Now there's a backdoor the VA never talks about. And that backdoor applies to anyone with a rating under uh, 60%. Okay. Or doesn't meet the combinations I just said. If you cannot work, if you have if you have food percent migraine, food percent rating for migraines, that is so devastating uh, to me that I look at that and like that is that person cannot work. Can, and the first thing I try to do is find other disabilities to combine it with because what I just said, where, where the VA at the regional office uh, gives the unemployability, that happens a lot faster. I appreciate that that's a relevant rel, relevant uh, relative term I just said as far as faster. But the other way through, uh, and this is 38 CFR 4.1, excuse me, 4.16B. So the only thing that changes there is the A and the B. So 4.16B. That says if you can't work because of your disability, regardless of the rating, you can still get, you can still get unemployability. Okay, so I see that most actually migraines, 50% uh, because you cap out there. I see that with migraines all the time. I also see that with backs at 40%. If they give you a 40% rating for back, that tells me, you know, I, I see basically people on social security disability and they get for their back and they get a 40% rating from the VA. Okay, so that's massive. Um, and so what happens on these cases though, is the person, the, the uh, line adjudicator, if you will, at the regional office cannot grant you unemployability. There has to be a referral to the director of compensation in DC to get this reviewed. Okay. I've been doing this, what, 15 years? I've never seen that done at the regional office, meaning that it's so much easier for them just to deny you unemployability. They deny you again. When it goes to the board, the board cannot grant this to you in the first instance. So if you have 50% rating, they cannot give you unemployability. They have to refer it to the director of compensation. So this takes forever because you, you know you're going to get all the way up to the, to the Board of Veterans Appeals. And then you're going to have to, um, you know, fr from there, you're going to have to hopefully get a referral. A lot of times the BVA denies it. So you got to go to the Veterans Court and come back and then get the referral. Okay, so it goes to the uh, Director of Compensation. They handle it for a while. They're supposed to write out a memo of what your restrictions are, what you are capable of doing you know, uh, from a vocational standpoint, meaning like your educational history or your, uh, you know, just, just the past jobs you've had and then say why you can or can't work. Okay. If they deny you at that point, your case can go back to the board and the board can grant it, but the board cannot grant it in the first instance. Okay. So this is, this is long, you know, fast for VA is like fast for a full grant, I'm going to say. I know everybody's getting uh, these decisions within three weeks to two months, but I rarely see those decisions to where they're a full grant like they should be. But fast for a full grant with the BA, we're talking a couple of years. For this, I see a minimum of five years. Okay. So in a case like yours, I'm looking, do you have 50% for, for migraines? I'm looking to see what else is a problem here. Does he have tinnitus? Um, again, the big thing here is depression. Can you get a depression rating? If you get just a 30% depression rating, then if my math works, that's like a 65%. So that goes up to 70. Boom, you hit that threshold and you can go forward and get the benefits a lot quicker. So if you're applying for anything that's under 60 or 70%, know that you are eligible under the VA regs, 
but also know that if you can find anything to tap onto that secondary or just another display rating altogether, um, important to do that because that reduces the amount of time significantly. Okay, so yes, you can get that. I apologize, I know that was really long. 38 CFR 4.16 is, is the unemployability reg that, that's uh, if you are contemplating filing for unemployability, I, I would just read that whole thing because it's got a lot of good information. Okay, let's see if I can be more succinct from here on out. Uh, Ariel Smalls, um, Ariel Smalls, how can we get a rating if we are a child during the Camp Lejeune toxic water contamination era? I don't know the answer to this. I thought the Congress was actually giving um, family members benefits. I have never represented a family member, so I, I, I just I don't know the answer to that. But I would look it up and see what what Congress has done. Okay, AB, I have incoming CMP exam for my urinary frequency that was not service connected. Now I'm claiming it's secondary to lower back. Okay, that, that is a common problem with lower back pain is that it, it causes frequency, it causes, um, what's the word, it causes folks to have accidents all the time because it, it, it really snaps down on bladder control. So I'm glad you're filing that because that's usually a, a pretty high rating. Uh, Okay, Robert Miller, Scott, I'm at 40% at catastrophic knee injury, service-connected disability, which causes back pains, which led to neck surgery to cause quadriplegic. Oh my gosh, Mr. Miller. That's not good. Um, I, I, I mean, if the VA was involved in causing that neck surgery, you need to file a claim for, for benefits under a, what's called 1151 claim, which basically if, if in VA medical care, um, any negligence is caused that would cause that, then definitely need to file that. We'd be happy to talk to you about that because those claims are pretty tricky. Um, but that hopefully, you know, hopefully you're service connected for that because you should be getting a lot more than 100% um, on, on that claim. Okay, uh, Scott, you had the follow-up. Sorry, I just don't see where the initial claim was. Um, Louis C., will the BBA be finally making decisions because the, the year end is coming up? I've been deferred five times a three month period. Talk about tricking my PTSD. I had two useless QTT exams. Who do I inform? Okay, so uh, Louis, thanks for bringing this up. Uh, I spoke to this earlier. Yes, we've got about a week left in their fiscal year. VA is desperate to make their numbers, meaning they got to make decisions, they got to push paper, whatever. And what I'm doing in all my cases is we are just flooding the VA saying, here it is, we got everything you need. If you don't have anything, let me know and I'll get it to you. Basically helping them help us. Um, so I would complain, this is where uh, Carol gets all fired up. I would complain to your congressman about these crappy exams, but then I'd also contact the VA via email, via uh, phone, via fax, something Just say, hey, these exams are awful. You've sent me three. Please make my decision now. I'm tired of waiting. So I, I would push hard because you're right. This is the time to do it. At the end of their year, they're desperate because their bosses are saying, okay, you did you know, X, Y, and Z claims, you, you had to do, you know, you had to do this many. Did you do that or did you do more? And then you're eligible for a bonus. So yeah, that, that's a great point for everybody here. If you haven't heard anything on your claim, start calling, start pushing because you got about 20 seconds. So you got about uh, a week left in their fiscal year to hopefully move your case. Paul Whitesell, 100% PT, retired from federal government after 26 years, paid into social security. 55 years old. Should I file for social security disability? How hard and long is process? I'd say it's not as hard and long as this process, but it could still take a couple of years. Um, I would, yes, definitely file. I mean, if you're hundred percent, that, that's really good evidence. It's not um, dispositive, meaning it's not going to, you're not going to get an automatic grant, but the fact that you're 55 um, and, you, and you have uh, a total disability rating, hopefully that gets you there. If you're, uh, you know, I guess, for lack of a better term, a white collar worker, meaning you've got a college education, you've worked at a desk uh, all your life, that actually does make it a little bit harder. But I would definitely apply because you paid into the system and those are your benefits. Okay, uh, Jody Stovall, have you seen one complaint in service about ankles, but the service exam found nothing turned into a successful OA rating? Um, I don't know what OA, I guess it must be osteoarthritis. Uh, yes, if you have a complaint in service, that is what I call an anchor. Uh, it's an incident in service so that, that you can show that 
something happened in service and you got a problem now. And then there has to be, you know, a nexus, a doctor saying, you know, whatever happened then is related to what's going on now. So you can use that. The fact that it's not noticed in your exit exam, those, I mean, I did not serve in the military, but I've read thousands of exit exams. And I honestly think they're, they're almost worthless. I mean, they just, they're just checking boxes, checking boxes. Even if the vet says, or it's, you know, the soldier at that time says, Hey, this is, this is, something that happened to me, I've got a problem with this. They'll say, yeah, whatever. And just check boxes. So I, that can't be counted against you. Um, but you've got to build up what happened in service and show why it's still causing the problems have. What does the word static mean? And does it help getting TDIU? It's that time. Static means that the disability is not changing. And in theory, they should not come back and re-examine you on that. So if you have a static back disability, they're saying, okay, he's not going to get better. We're not, we're not going to re-examine them on that. Now, of course, it happens not again where they do re-examine you, but that's the purpose of it is to show that, okay, this thing's not getting better. We're not going to come back and, and try to see if he's gotten better. <clears throat> All right, Bill McGrath, submitted my IMO for sleep apnea, secondary to PTSD, do an ACE exam only. This is a SUP claim that was denied direct. Okay, uh, let me see. I think you probably had more and got cut off there. Let's see, Bill. Received my C file five months in five months. Uh, good for you, Bill. That is pretty quick. Okay, so uh, Bill, hopefully you get that uh, apnea service connected. I usually do not see that happen at the regional office. It's something that I have to do, or we typically see at the board. Get a copy of the ACE exam make sure they spoke to not only that the sleep apnea is not service connected directly, but that it's not secondary to PTSD, okay? Michael Oliver, if you have a VA claim within, within one year and are granted non-service connected at 50%, and then you file for an increase in VA service connection, what's the effective date? Okay, so it goes back to the VA claim you filed. If you filed a claim for service-connected disability, and then they give you a non-service-connected pension, then yeah, everything's still on the plate. If you file, meaning like you can say, okay, great, that's that's great that you gave this to me in non-service capacity, but I'm, I want this to be service-connected. If, uh, if you file a non-service-connected claim and they grant it at 50%, well, uh, an appeal, that, that's, that's frankly an open question, whether that appeal would be something you could appeal for service connection or you just have to refile again. I don't have the answer to that. That's, uh, that's I, I think that could go either way. John Johnson, why does VA don't fill out Nexus and IMO plus DBQ? Don't they work for veterans rights? Uh, yes, they do work for veterans rights on paper, um, but, but, but I feel your frustration. Is, uh, you know, again, they have a duty to assist you to win your claim. It is in statute that Congress wrote. Uh, I have friends, I'd like to think I'm not this cynical yet, who call that duty to sabotage, meaning you say, okay, I got a back claim. And they say, okay, great, go see my examiner. And the examiner says, no, there's nothing wrong with his back. And in fact, he's just crazy. Uh, so so I, I feel your frustration, but if you've got a case that you believe is related to VA, excuse me, related to your time in service, you need to keep filing and, and uh, keep fighting. 15, my own way. Recently hit 70% due to bilateral place plantis and flat feet and only received a favorable finding for my lower back. Should I immediately file for secondary condition regarding the back to pain? Yeah, I think that's great. If, uh, if they're saying your back is not directly service connected, then say fine. Uh, and if, you, if you've got a high rating for your feet, uh, that definitely could affect what's going on with your back. Uh, Jody, thank you for your help and info. You are so you're certainly welcome. And I again, I hope this uh, gets you the benefits you deserve. It's that time. Can a person with 100% PNT file and receive TDIU? So, yes, is the short answer. Um, the only reason you would want to do that is to get yourself up to the special monthly compensation, special monthly compensation S. Okay, special monthly compensation S says that if you have a 100% rating and other ratings that combine to 60%, then you're entitled to, I think it's like three or $400 more a month, okay? So let's look, let's kind of break that down in this scenario, okay? You're 100%, I'm assuming it's 100% um, uh, due to multiple disabilities. If you're 100% due to one disability, you don't have other disabilities, then this is worthless, okay? But let's say one of those disabilities is, 
PTSD is the easiest one, let's say, because it's say it's at 70%. And then you have four or five other disabilities. You have uh, sleep apnea, you have tinnitus, you have a bad knee, both the last two are 10%. Okay, if you go back and say, my unemployability, my unemployability is due to uh, just the PTSD, and you get that unemployability, okay? So you get unemployability based just on PTSD, and you have those separate ratings that all combine to 60%, that's where the SMCS comes in. So that's where you would wanna do that, okay? Okay, John, unearned income, rent, interest, gambling winnings, capital gains, et cetera, all don't count as income for unemployability. That is correct. I'd love to see your uh, gambling winnings. Uh, that sounds like you're at least finding some fun there. Um, Michael, how severely will having a paralegal degree work against me in TDIU for 70% anxiety, 30% IBS Crohn's if I have no experience with that degree within the last 15 years? <clears throat> well, if you had a physical disability, I think it would be, it would work against you. But if you have a mental health disability, anxiety knows no professional um, bounds as far as it knows no, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a surgeon or if you're a bricklayer, okay? If you can't be around other people, if you can't take direction, if you can't, you know, just, just keep your mind on one thing and focus, if you don't like bosses, you know, if you don't like being outside your house, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you are incapacitated because of those issues, you know, not incapacitated, but you're unable to maintain a job, then you should be at unemployability. So it doesn't matter uh, in your case, sir. Trout fly and Anticio. Hello, I'm 100% rated. I filed a claim for undocumented illness. I was at Camp Lejeune in 73, drinking and eating food, poisoned with water. Uh, Passy meningitis from Okinawa on float on a, okay, let's see if I can find, troop ship that was in Vietnam for herbicides. Okay, can I file? Yes, you can. Um, to me, the question would be, should you file? What would those ratings give you? I mean, if, you, if it incapacitates you on a physical standpoint that, you know, uh, your central nervous system is, is shutting down, then, then yeah, I would file that. Otherwise, you know, if you can't get a rating up to uh, 60% and one, one single rating is not 100%, then I, I don't think that gets you anywhere. Ray Estacion, can you file BDD while on limited duty status? If you're still in service, if you're still active duty, this isn't the reserves, then you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get uh, any, any benefits from that. But I do think you can file when you're on your way out, you know, do the exit exam to hopefully start getting your benefits before you leave. Nelson Velasquez, I filed for hearing loss and was denied for not having a record while in service. I have civilian medical records. I fired artillery for 20 years, <coughs> lost 40% of my hearing in the left ear. Okay, so, so again, you gotta have something happen in service, you gotta have a current disability, and you gotta have the nexus, the link between the two. Firing artillery for 20 years is a clear incident service. It doesn't matter to me if you did, had a hearing um, test in service and you're fine, your, your exit exam says you're fine. That's all nonsense, okay? You were next to one of the loudest uh, pieces of machinery that we've created, okay? So I think you got something there. And if you got hearing loss diagnosed now, then now you just need a doctor to say one's related to the other. And you know, unless you were doing some massive construction or something after service, I just don't see how they can say it wasn't related. Uh, let's see, Hans Hans, what is TDIU? Total disability due to unemployability, uh, individual unemployability. So it's basically people say IU all the time or unemployability, but basically it means if you cannot work due to your VA, disability, VA disabilities, then the VA has to bridge whatever your rating is up to 100%, okay? So you got 70% for depression, um, even though you have 70% for depression, it, it can't keep, you can't work while well, your rating is 70%, but with the unemployability, they're paying you at the 100% rate. Yoli RV, my husband has 60%, he's trying to get 100%, has a doctor's appointment tomorrow. He has a bad back, knees, and has fallen a couple times and it's not getting better. Uh, so let me see if I can see if there's a question you had down here. I don't see one. 
Um, so what you need to do is get your doctor to, uh, his doctor, excuse me, to document all those things, okay? That he, you know, bad back, well, what does that mean? Well, does he have pain lifting? Does he have pain bending? Uh, knees, same thing. How long can he stand? What's going on there? The falling thing is important as well. He needs to document how often is he falling? Does he have to use a walker? Does he have to use a wheelchair? Okay, those are all things to look at. Medmundo, do I need a nexus letter for each claim or can I put them all together, i.e. low back pain, headaches, second to bilateral knee problems? So the VA has to get you a CMP exam for those issues, okay? So if they get you an exam and it's negative, then at that point you would want to go get an outside medical exam. So what I mean by that is, let's say they give you a, um, a positive uh, that your headaches are secondary to your knees and they give you a rating, but they say, oh, your knees haven't got any worse and nowhere has your back. Well, at that point, you'd want to go out and get an orthopedic exam, but don't do that before they do theirs, okay? Because they're going to get their exams anyway. Percy Jackson, what should I expect from seeing a neurologist? How do I apply that to my claim? Percy, I don't know what your claim is, but a neurologist deals with the nervous, nervous system, obviously. So if you have a problem, uh, you know, radiculopathy is, is a pain, a tingling you get in your arm from a, a neck problem. Uh, neuropathy is a pain you get, same thing, tingling, numbness in your hands and your feet from diabetes. So you'd want all that kind of stuff documented. Uh, neurologists would also look at migraines. Um, they could also look at something like MS. So it just depends on what, what the doctors look, what your uh, problem is. And then you just want them to say, uh, this is what's going on. Okay, John, I'm 55, 100% for mental illness. Haven't worked in a long time. Should I, would I qualify for social security disability or other payments? Yes, you should. If you haven't worked, I think five of the past 10 years, you might not get, even if you win, you might get what's called supplemental security income, which is based on uh, how much money you're bringing in, in other places. And that could be, that would be completely offset. But if you've worked, you know, more than that, then, then you would, uh, you would get uh, benefits there as well. Michaela McKenzie claim was denied saying it wasn't service connected. Can I appeal that? Yes. They did say that I had Mariners, uh, I'm thinking you're meaning, um, gosh, I forgot the name of that. Um, I know what you mean. Not sure how to convince them it's service connected if it's not in my records. That's the problem. You got to show something happened in service. Either you started having those symptoms or you were exposed to something that, that Meniere's, that's what I think you're saying, uh, that, that, uh, that caused that. So that, that's tough. If you can't show something in service, you're not going to win. Oh, and if you're waiting for a decision letter, they're currently able to email or fax it to you as they are behind. You just need to call them. That's great news. Thank you for sharing that. That's, uh, and again, going back to the fiscal year for VA ending in, in a week, that would be a great thing to do to say, hey, you know, send me my decision. What, what do you have? That, thank you for doing that uh, or letting us know that. It's that time. Continued 50%, migraines, migraine headaches, 50%, sleep apnea, 10% tinnitus. Can the VBA grant TDIU? So yes, your, your ratings are more than 70%. And one, well, two of them here, but but you have to have one rating that's at least 40%. And so you qualify there. Live, love yourself. What if VA is stalling my claim by requesting a 214192 for over three months? This is the sixth request. Clearly, they are not responding. So the if uh, live, love yourself is applying for unemployability. Um, as part of that process, the VA sends out the form mentioned there, the 4192 to all prior employers within a certain amount of you know, time. I don't know if it's five years or you know, 10 years or something. Um, and they have it in their manual that I think they actually do have to send it out. I don't know if it's two or three times to the same person. Definitely delays the claim. It's a pain in the butt. Um, but once they've done that, they fulfill their obligation, then they can make a decision. And that does not hurt uh, a person's ability to get those benefits. That That's just you know, a procedure they do. And then it, and I agree it, it is uh, frustrating because it makes it take longer. Joe Torres, I got 70% for persistent, persistent depression. I disagree. I should be at hundred percent. I also was diagnosed with SSD. Uh, shouldn't effective date and retro pay go back to when I got service connected from my back in 2012. That all depends. Uh, depends on when you first put in the claim. 
and then if you continuously appealed it all the way through. There are exceptions, the exceptions are rare, and you really got to dig into your file to find them. You know, if you submitted evidence after a decision and they never considered it within the appeal period, so if you got a rating decision and you submitted evidence within a year and they didn't consider it, they should have to go back. Uh, but, but that's hard. Usually it's this claim you just filed, unfortunately. John, also FY, remind vets that some states give 100% rated vets partial or even full property tax forgiveness. Don't have to pay. That is a big thing. Very state by state. This is something that veteran service officers are on top of. They know exactly what you can get. You need to be permanent in total, though, to get this. Okay, so that's one of the reasons it's worth if you are 100%, but not permanent total, fighting for that permanent total status. It's that time. Can service connected diabetes cause secondary hypertension or the reverse hypertension cause secondary diabetes. The first one definitely can happen. The second one, I do not know. I have not uh, prosecuted a claim or hypertension caused diabetes. I, I would think that's a possibility though. So we see, thank you, thank you. Hey, thanks for coming and, uh, and giving all these good questions here. It's that time. Are they extending golf war presumption deadline expected to expire in this end of this year? Yes, they are. The mister, I really need to speak with a lawyer concerning my appeal, uh, my appeal claims. Okay, uh, you're welcome to give us a call. There's tons of other attorneys out there now. Um, frankly, if you're looking for other ones, I, I recommend uh, um, Bosley and Bratch out of Tampa or St. Pete, I guess. Uh, John Green, who's based out of Rhode Island. Uh, Chisholm, Chisholm, Kilpatrick, CCK. They're out of Rhode Island as well. Uh, there, there's uh, there's, 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 a, there's several good, I mean, there's a bunch of other really good, uh, Glover Luck out of Dallas. There, there's a lot, a bunch of good attorneys out there. Um, but, you know, if you want to give us a call, maybe we could, uh, we could help you. Ten toes down. I believe VBA, Veterans Benefit Administration, is setting itself up for a class action lawsuit for declaring that non-VBA sanctioned IMOs are always inferior to their sanctioned exams. Oh. Uh. I, uh, I, I, uh, ten toes down. I, I am so frustrated uh, by exactly what you said, because my cases end up going a lot longer than they should because the VA gets some crappy CMP exam where all they do is take some form that, you know, just, and they literally just check boxes. Uh, the doctors we use, we, we, you know, we end up paying a lot of money for, it, but they, they take the time to actually write out a narrative about the veteran, not some stupid objective veteran. And as you say, a lot of times in the regional office, they'll say, Hey, well, our guy said this. Um, so I, I'm frustrated. I don't know how that could be a, a class action though, because by the time it gets to the board, the board usually fixes that, um, class action, you have to get a case to the court and then, you know, say, Hey, look, this is what they're doing here. And they're doing this across the board. So that's something I've thought a lot about because I feel like the CMP exams actually end up making the process a lot longer, if not flat out getting the vet denied. Um, then, then if, you know, if they didn't have that, but anyway, um, there's, Oh, and then you also said often falsely claiming that non-sanctioned opinions lack detailed rationale, even when the details are there. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. You're preaching the choir. I, it, it's, it's so frustrating and it's, they use that as their quick way to deny a claim and it, and it is beyond aggravating. But with that, if you have a solid medical exam and the BA just does exactly what Tento's talked about, you need to keep on appealing because the board is the first place you actually get a judge, an attorney to look at the case and they understand what the law says and they understand they can't just violate the law like that because if they do, you will appeal to the veterans court and they will slam the BBA for that. So um, with 10 toes, I'm, I'm extremely frustrated, but you, this is one where you just gotta persist. Jody, have you seen people get SSI disability and SS retirement? No, you can't, you can only get one or the other. Johnny Lee will, Wills, I was turned away from the VA I'm service connected. I have anxiety and major depression. Uh, only at 10%. Claim can't file due to nexus. Okay, Johnny, um, if you're not service connected, that means you got to file a claim and show that whatever happened in service is connected to what's going on now. If you are service connected at 10%, you don't need to worry about a nexus anymore. You just got to show them that what I have is worse and, and, and I need you to, uh, you know, help me here. Okay. 
All right. Um, let's see, Michael, I watch your videos and want to say big thanks for everything you guys do. Would love to hear more uh, <laughs> from Mr. Baker's fights. I'll have to have Kerry Baker on here more. He's a, uh, he, he finds creative ways to get, uh, get, get the VA all work up. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky to be able to work with Kerry. Rome me Rome service connected for lower back pain at 40%. And now the VA said, I have to get a reevaluation on my back next month. Can you let me know what to expect at exams? Same exam you took last time, if, if this was in the last 10 years. Um, and you just need to make sure they understand, you know, that if you have not gotten better, that you, you need to tell them that you say, Hey, things are the same. You know, I have a, I have one good day for every three bad days, or I, I got to limit everything I do because of my back. Or, you know what? I'm glad we're having this exam because things have gotten a lot worse. Now I can only get up and stand for 10 minutes. I can, I can lay in bed for half an hour, you know? So, so be prepared to talk about what's going on and how it's affected you. I would even get a letter from a, somebody you live with a spouse or child or somebody or a friend and just hand that in. It's just basically what you want to do is have them list the facts. This is what I see happening with Rome me Rome. You know, the, the, these are the problems I see on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what I watch him go through. You, you don't want a letter saying, oh, he's so great. She's so great. You should get more benefits. None of that crap. You just want the facts of what's going on and how the disability affects you. Okay. So you want to take those yourself from your own personal observations. And if you can get letters from anybody else, you want them to do that too. Okay. Cerebral one served in Turkey, Greece, Italy, white sands, missile range in Mexico. All sites had nuclear weapons was unit armored and around ionized radiation daily recently diagnosed with prostate cancer. Should I file? Yes, you should file. The VA has to take, um, in your service records, there should be samplings. I forget what they call uh, of what you're exposed to and how you're exposed. They send these to the Mississippi regional office and they make a determination with the, something like the atomic, um, some, some, some kind of a board that looks at your file and determines if you were exposed to enough. Uh, that's a hard case because if they come down against you, they're, they're bored. You can't fight their, their findings, even if you have an expert, but yeah, I, that's, that's a lot yet going on. So I would file something. Okay. Uh, Yeller 43 part one. I have a, my C file and realized I filed for planner, Play, I can never say this, plus Planus in, in 03, never received correspondence from VA. I filed again in 2021, waiting for a rating. Once service connection, can I file to, let's see if we can find the rest of it, uh, get back to 03. I moved from Virginia to Florida, have records showing, show Virginia and Florida required my claim, but nothing else pertaining to the original claim. Okay. If, if, Okay, if you filed this um, and, and it's in the file, in your C file, showing that you filed something in 2003, they never responded, they never did anything, that is an open claim. It goes all the way back to them, okay? If you filed it, but they never put it in your claim, that's much, much harder. Um, that's not really a claim you can win, even if you have, you know, I don't know, stamp receipts and stuff. So I don't, if you filed it, and there's notation in there, even like a phone record from the VA saying, oh, he wants to file or he did file this, um, then, then that's great. That gets you all the way back. But if you don't have something like that, it's super hard to win that case. Okay, uh, Tom Marine Vet, a reevaluation is the same CMP exam as before, range of motion. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Johnny Lee Willis, you're a victim of assault. So uh, what you wanna do there, as far, okay, so either there's something that happened in service that you can show on a record, uh, medical exam, police report, something like that, that's pretty rare, or there's a behavior change in service or a, a, you know, a change of a station, a change of MOS, you can show any of that. Or if you have somebody who knew you before and after who could say, this is what his behavior was like before service, this is what it's like after, there's a change, those are ways you can show something happened in service and you can win. Michael, mixed stories on TDIU filing and back pay. BSO says file claim <clears throat> to pursue TDIU, but if you're already rated at 70% for anxiety, they should have granted it then and back pay to that initial 
Uh, Grant, th that is, um, that's muddy. We've had, we've had cases that went not only up to the Veterans Court, but up to the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals. And those cases have frankly wish-washed. So what he's saying is, here's what you got to show. 2015, you get 70% for anxiety. And in the record somewhere, it states you're not working because of that anxiety. Well, that is an implicit claim for unemployability. The question is, does that claim close? Is that claim denied once the appeal period runs? Uh, the traditional reading of the law has been, yes, that claim is closed. Even if, it, even if you never were told to file that or you didn't know that was even something out there and the VA did and they noted it and they, they closed it. They're still saying, no, you gotta, you gotta um, either appeal or file the, uh, the VA 21 dash 8940. It's the TDIU claim. So that I would fight for that. Um, but it, just know that it's, it's kind of an uphill battle. There have been some rulings that say that, yes, that is still open, but it's not definitive right now. Okay, Michaela McKenzie, I worked on an airfield for three years and in a pump room with loud machinery for two years. I thought that would qualify. Do I need a letter saying that? If you, I'm sorry, Michaela, let's see if I can find the other one. If you're talking about, um, if you're talking about noise exposure, then yes, that would qualify. I would definitely, um, okay, so you're, I would, oh, so that's for mirror disease. So you need to get the, hearing loss probably service connected first if you don't have that and then show that you have uh that you have Meniere's disease because of that okay where was i here um george merritt hi have ptsd like 60 percent and i feel like i should file for my sleep apnea do i have 10 i do have 10 percent on my knee can you advise me yes file that claim you're going to need an outside medical exam. I would not get that until you get up to the board because it's going to be denied all the way up. Uh, and then I went way too far. Good afternoon, Bill Barrett. Uh, without a DBQ for an increase in IVDS, this is a back pain, uh, from 10% lumbar and increase for bilateral radiculopathy, each at 10%, is medical evidence in functional capacity exam with note from PCP enough? I mean, it's strong evidence. Will they send you out for an exam still? Yeah, but um, if they if the exam is not positive, then I would definitely uh, I would definitely I would definitely say, look, you need to read this versus that, and you need to kind of so you would need to get a copy of the CMP exam, see what's different, and go from there. But yes, I think that's strong evidence. All right. <clears throat> It's that time. Can you be service connected for diabetic neuropathy and peripheral neuropathy? Also, what are what are the looking for in diabetic neuropathy exam? So, diabetic neuropathy really is peripheral neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy um, affects your your uh, your extremities essentially. So it's it's the same thing. Um, and and what they're looking for in that exam, <clears throat> they want to see if you have tingling. They want to see if you have numbness. They want to see if you have pain in your extremities. You know, I guess it could start up in the arms, but that's what they're looking for to see how severe your loss of sensation is. William Curry, hearing held 7921, should I file new claims or just wait for the judge's decision? I personally would wait for the judge's decision um, on that because I, I just wouldn't want to give them a reason to, uh, to mess it up anymore. Okay, I was just told that I skipped a couple back up here. Um, shoot, J George Merritt, let's see, okay, J.R. George Merritt, okay, George Merritt, sorry, George, uh, oh, wait, we, we did talk, can you advise, yes, do, do the PTSD, uh, J.R., I was struck in the side of the head in the military, I'm waiting on a hearing, due to my loss of memory, I wonder how much percentage I might be experiencing, and I was hospitalized after being struck in the side of the head, and my bones had to be reconstructed. It all happened in the military and the military installation doctors were from the military uh, uh, hospital. Okay, I'm wondering how much percentage I might expect. It totally depends. I mean, this is gonna be a traumatic brain injury most likely, although if you're struck in the side of the head and broke the bone, you would have scars, which uh, definitely would be have to be uh, granted separate ratings. Uh, 
but if you're, you know, it would, it would depend on the severity of your memory loss. Is it short term? Is it long term? Is it uh, recall memory? You know, just something someone just said, being able to remember it. So for a TBI exam, it's a pretty thorough exam they send you to. And you would uh, basically need to look at that and see what they give you the rating on and then go back and read it and say, well, is that accurate as far as how I feel? But that, uh, that's, don't let them screw that up. I mean, especially if you're not working because of this. Uh, or if you have problems where you need people helping you because of this, you know, they like to screw up TBIs because they've made it so complicated, but that's one you, you, you definitely need to fight on. Okay. Um, yeah. Did I miss anybody else? Okay. David um, Madrano, pre-existing conditions. Can you explain presumption of soundness? David, start by saying this. Uh, I do... Um, <laughs> I do presentations in front of lawyers who practice VA law and they have no earthly clue as to what this is. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll try to give it in simple terms when I usually have to give it in an hour. So when the, when the DOD brings you into service, they have one shot to show that you have pre-existing conditions and whether those pre-existing conditions are still affecting you. Okay. So when you have your entrance exam, the entrance examiner has to note you have a pre-existing condition and whether, so that's part one, part two is, has it resolved or not? Okay. So let's say, you know, I see all the time that's come to me and they played football in, in uh, high school and they blow out their knee their sophomore year. Well, they have it, you know, they have it rehabbed. And by the time they get to service, their knee, yeah, they, they tore their ACL, but it is completely fine. Okay. And that it's noted that there was a pre-existing injury. However, it is completely healed and it's, it's not a problem. Okay. So let's say the case where I see this the most is psych cases. Okay. So let's say that uh, presumption of soundness. So this is how it works. If you, if you have a disability in service, meaning it's noted in service and the VA comes and says that this disability pre-existed service, they got to show that it was on the, uh, on the uh, exam you had, or that there's clear and convincing evidence that a pre-existed service, okay? And then they gotta show that whatever that disability was, it didn't get worse, okay? So mental health claims, I, I, people ask me, you know, do you ever file Q claims? I almost never file Q claims except in two instances. Uh, if the VA has said anywhere that a disability is pre-existed service or if a, VA, if a veteran has been reduced. Those are two cases I look at and think they could have, the, the odds of them screwing this up are great even if it was two years ago or it was 40 years ago. Okay. So here's what happens. Vet has a, um, let's say a schizophrenia in service and they're, you know, they, they send them out. Well, on their exit exam, it says, uh, it'll say EPS existed prior to service. Okay. Vet goes and applies for benefits. The VA will say, Hey, sorry, <laughs> this looks awful, but what you have existed prior to service. Okay. Well, here's what the presumption of soundness says. If that was not on the entrance exam, then the VA has to show through clear and convincing evidence that this disability existed and was affecting the veteran before he entered service. Okay. And they have to show that it didn't get aggravated by service. Notice the importance here the, the burden shifts. You know, we've been talking about you got to show something happened in service, you got a diagnosis now, and there's a nexus. Okay. In this case, we showed something happened in service, there, there is uh, a current disability. And then the nexus is pretty obvious. Well, the VA has to, the VA is saying, no, 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 it pre exists service. VA has to prove that through clear and convincing evidence, okay? They have to be the ones to say, no, it didn't happen. And here's all the evidence as to why it didn't happen in service. They screw this up so much. They like, and again, I said this with mental health claims, it's, it's their like, get out of jail free card. Um, they're gonna say, no, this happened for service, too bad. Uh, you can't get benefits for it but there was nothing on the entrance exam and, and they just kind of, you know, wash that over. And again, sometimes there could be something happen before service and it's on the entrance exam. Okay. But if the doctor says there's, there's no residuals, there's nothing currently going on as a result. Well, that doesn't count. Okay. The VA then has to come back and get some facts before service and show that something happened and show that that was the only reason why the veteran has this disability. Um, but if in service, if the disability got worse, significantly worse and and 
the VA can't show why that was, then at that time, uh, they, they uh, you know, they, they lose. Okay, so that was a long way. I know it's presumption of soundness, but it, it is a huge one. If ever you are confronted with the VA saying your disability existed prior to service, you need to get your C file. You need to look at your entrance exam, see what the doctor said on that issue. Okay, the doctor didn't say anything. You write the VA back and say, uh, "Sorry, it did exist prior to service," and you know you you didn't um, you didn't give me the benefits I deserve. I think we have a couple articles about this on on our website. It, it's I, I made it really I really simplified it, but it is nuanced. Um, if it does happen to you, it's something you want to fight the VA on. Uh, but, and if it happened to you in the past, I got a lot of vets from Vietnam who got kicked out for personality disorder, but also had some other you know, PTSD or some anxiety uh, or something, uh, then, then they applied back in the 80s and were denied. Well, I get these open, we go all the way back to the 80s. Okay. So uh, that was like a four or five word uh, question, David, but I, I think it went on for about 20 minutes there. So yeah, keep that, um, keep that in mind. Okay. Ariel, should I file? Let's see. Uh, should I file for a uh, higher level review if I was denied a claim because I didn't have a diagnosis at the time? And currently they have x-rays showing injury in my first claim. It's been a year from my first claim. So if it's been a year and you haven't filed a uh, NOD or a higher level review, that case is over. And so you have to file a new supplemental claim and you definitely want to put that in there. Michael Oliver, on a reopen claim, does the effective date go back to the date of discharge if the claim is filed within one year, or is it the date? What does the date of entitlement arose mean? Okay, so that's one of the few times where if you file a claim, you can actually go back and get benefits before that claim was filed. Um, so if that's your very first claim, it's within a year of discharge, yes, you can get it back to discharge, or the date of entitlement arose. That means the date you were diagnosed with the disability. So the current diagnosis, if you weren't diagnosed until after you filed the claim or when you filed the claim, you cannot go all the way back. Okay. Um, let's see. Dimitri Beek. Hi, can we submit evidence in a supplemental claim a BVA decision that is relevant to my contentions? I'm trying to service connect residuals of TMJ. That makes me more chill hurt. And I found a BVA decision behind the same. Yeah, I think you could reopen that in a supplemental, but I'd also make it personal saying, this is what the BVA decision found. I am, I am in that position because X, Y, and Z. You know, these, are, these are the same exact issues I have. So I, I, would, I would make sure you personalize it. Uh, Mr. Curry, um, yeah, we talked about that final claim. Hold off. Bill Barrett, good afternoon. Without DBQ for increase. Okay, so we talked about that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, at that time, it's that time. Can you be service connected? Okay, so we did those as well. Um, <laughs> Tom, all right, yes, Tom and Edith Wilson, don't forget to information on status of judges. Okay, so here's the information. Next week, I get to go to DC and uh, go to the NOVA conference where we have great uh, presentations on all different kinds of issues, but we also bring in the chairman of the board, Veterans Appeals, and then the, uh, the director of uh, Veterans Benefit Administration. We will be asking the dates. How long is it taking, you know, for each lane? Okay, um, <clears throat> what lane's fastest? What is the delay date? Uh, you know, just, just trying to pepper them with all the information. Now, I am uh, so excited about this, but I'm also trying to be reasonable, or, or reasonable might not be the word, but but uh, yeah, reasonable, I guess. In that, I'm sure there'll be a basis. Okay, I'm sure they'll say, you know, him and Ha and Hedge. What I'm hoping is to get at least a close date, okay? Just just for them to say, hey, it's taken us two hours, or hey, it's taken us, sorry, two hours, it's taken us two years, or it's taken us whatever. And what I hope to have is something to come back to you by and say, this is what they told me. If your claim is this old or older, start hammering away at the BBA, okay? Start knocking on the door and start saying, the BBA chairman publicly said X, okay? So I hope, uh, Tom and Ina, I will have more information for you next week on that, well, uh, I guess in two weeks, um, and be able to kind of let you know what uh, what they're saying, because, you know, they could totally make stuff up too, right? Or they could just say, we don't know. I'm hoping they can, 
have more gumption and, and not just say we don't know because it's, we're all in the same boat of being lost and not being able to uh, not being able to, to to appreciate how long something's going to take. I mean, if I know it's going to take two years, and I tell my client, "Hey, it's going to take two years. There's nothing we can do. You know, you make sure you're healthy. I'll be pushing your case." That's one thing. But if we got some cases decided in three months and the others three years, that that's when things become really frustrating. Okay, so I am at about just over an hour. My mouth is dry, and uh, I think I'm losing my voice here. But I will answer a couple more of these. All right, B. Sneed, first visit to VA Medical. Doctor said they didn't have much in my records. Do I upload records from TRICARE to support supplemental claims? VA, uh, you can upload them, or you can say, look at my TRICARE records from this date to that date, and they can go get them. Alex S., can VA grant me service connection for sciatica if CEP examiner added it during? Yes, my back claim. Okay, this is so important, guys. And this is something the VA is understood pre-AMA back in the legacy days, as in two years ago. And now they're trying to skate around. Okay, this is this is where you see it too. Veteran goes in for a lumbar spine disability. Okay, VA examiner looks at it and says, yeah, you have that. That's what's going on. And oh, by the way, this tingling you have down your legs, this numbness you have in your feet, that's called radiculopathy. And that's caused by the, uh, the lower back problem. Okay, used to be, meaning used to be because the case law was crystal clear on this, the VA should give you ratings both for the lumbar spine and for the radiculopathy, okay? Now what's happening, and, and, and the other big one or easy one, I guess, is diabetes. Doc would come in and say, yeah, you have diabetes, you gotta you know, inject insulin, and oh, by the way, you have peripheral neuropathy. You, you know, your hands are tingling, your feet are numb. Those are separate ratings, okay? So for you know, a minimum rating that I see for diabetes would be 20%, and the minimum rating I'd see for the appendages would be you know, 10% for each. What the VA is doing now is they're either flat out ignoring the doctor, you know, just just ignoring the fact that there is there there is something related to that disability you came in for, or when you ask them, they're saying, "Oh, you have to file a claim for that. That's a different claim. It's a new claim. You won't be able to get benefits until the date of that claim." That is garbage. Okay, so you know, in a way you have to kind of play their game and file that claim so you get the money you deserve. But at the same time, it should go back to the date that that, and, and I think your case, uh, the lumbar spine was filed, okay? Big thing to think about there, okay? Because it's, and that's another reason why it's important to read your CMP exams, because they'll point stuff out. Uh, there was a gentleman on here saying that he had uh, incontinence, bladder issues because of his back. Well, guess what? That's secondary to his back. That should also be rated because of that CMP exam, okay? So, uh, re really, really important to, to think about that. Okay, uh, Bill. Bill, I don't think what happened here. Shoot, I just lost your, uh, okay, I lost everybody's. All right, Bill, uh, will I get bumps out of FDC? It's been over a year since my PTSD went 70%. Can I still file 8940 separately? or attack the back increase. So if you have a case for PTSD and it's at 70%, as you say, file the unemployability form and that goes back to the date you filed this claim for PTSD. They might fight you on that, but it's part and parcel of that PTSD claim. It's just showing another way for you to get the complete amount of benefits to which you're entitled. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, let me just kind of answer some folks I haven't got to yet because I'm almost out of time. Joe, I got out of the military in 06. I recently was diagnosed with plantar fasciitis. Can I still file for compensation? If something happened in service to cause that or it started in service, yes. Uh, let's see, Todd's place. Uh, okay, it looks like you're answering a question. Still appealable on TIU, May. It's been placed on LTD since February. Okay. Michael, is it still appealable for TDIU until May and been placed on long-term disability since February? So if you are within a year of that appeal, then yes. Uh, okay. Hey, thanks for all the love from all you guys. I appreciate it. Um, let me just see. JL Tapo, I didn't understand your content concerning sleep apnea being denied going all the way to the board. Okay. We have sleep apnea claims all the time. Uh, most of them are secondary claims uh, related to uh, PTSD, frankly, is the biggest one, diabetes sometimes we get. But with PTSD, they, the VA, for some reason, loathes that claim. They just won't grant it. So what I see, I have maybe seen once in 
you know, 10, whatever, 15 years, is that the regional office grants that case when it's secondary, okay? Where we win our sleep apnea cases are at the board. So I just tell people, you know, you got to get through the process to get up the board. I typically try to save my evidence until it's at the board. So the regional office can't get a CMP exam saying, you know, this is this this uh, outside examiner doesn't know what to talk about. So that, that's what I'm talking about there. I, I just rarely see them granted. Um, FAMT, GERD, is it associated with PTSD? I filed secondary to PTSD. CMP examiner says it's less likely than not that I was denied even though I have a diagnosis. Should I try for a higher level review? Um, yeah, but I, I think you're going to need different evidence, which means you'd be a sub, need to go supplemental claim or a uh, BBA evidence because if, you, if the CMP is negative, then you're not going to win there. Can you file CJ99? <laughs> Can you file a supplemental claim if a higher level review claim is denied? Yes, you can. You just see new and relevant evidence there. 11, super life. I've been suffering from digestion issues since returning from Iraq. Didn't know anything about presumptive conditions until recently. Never went to see a doctor. How do I prove this to the VA? You file the claim. You say, I was in Iraq. Okay. And you say, here are the issues I'm having. This is the one place, this is the one regulation. This is three point, sorry, 38, three, this is why I got to quit soon. 38 CFR 3.317. Yeah, I didn't say that right either. 38 CFR 3.117. Uh, this is the, and I'm bringing that up just to make sure I didn't give you the wrong one. Yep, the, the last digits there are 3.317. This is Persian Gulf disabilities, okay? It is the one reg that says you don't, you know, as we said, something happened in service, a nexus between the two, and a current diagnosis. This is the one area where you do not have to have a current diagnosis. So if these stomach problems end up being IBS, well, that's a current diagnosis, and that is presumptive. But if these stomach problems are just uh, kind of vague problems, but they, you know, you can see objective results, if there's diarrhea, or if there's pain in different parts of your stomach, um, that should be service connected. And it's based on that regulation and it's also based on the symptoms, meaning they rate it on the symptoms that you're having, okay? Uh, all right, two more questions. Let's see, where am I not seeing from? Okay, so this, uh, yeah, DT2. Um, I am service connected for PTSD, I was diagnosed with obstructive pers personality, obstructive sleep apnea via a civilian uh, civilian physician. What challenges should I expect with putting in a claim for sleep apnea secondary PTSD? We talked about this a lot. Um, they're going to deny you, deny you, deny you. Get your you got to get an outside exam and then get it in. Okay, uh, <clears throat> John, Patty, are you accepting new clients? <clears throat> we do accept new clients. I think I've said before, uh, we don't accept that many. We get lots and lots of requests, but to keep our, what I like to think, our quality of our advocacy good, we can only have so many clients. And, you know, I'll tell you, on the other hand, I'm trying to hire like crazy, just get people in here to help us so that we can help more people. Uh, it's, it's just kind of slow going. Brian Quinn, no medical records, but took a fall in Iraq in 03, had symptoms and pain ever since. MRI this year shows herniated disc and neck, torn rotator cuff. Buddy statements, medical records enough? Yes, yes. The buddy statements need to be factual, not, hey, Brian's a great guy. Give him benefits. It needs to be like, hey, I was sitting here with him. I watched him fall back. I watched something fall on his head. Or even if they didn't see it, you know, Brian and I would run six miles a day. And then one day he told me I had back pain and he was, you know, at the point where he could barely get around. So yes, you, you, that, that's where you want to go with that. Okay, uh, is there a way to contact VA info on appeal? You know, I don't have this darn number. Um, I was told by a friend that yes, there is a number for the VA. So uh, before I forget about that, push the VA right now. They got seven days left in their fiscal year. If you have a claim that's been sitting there, call them, email them, find a number, call your, call your congressman, equally as important. Say, hey, my case has been sitting here. Can you help me do something about it? The VA rarely responds to when we try to pressure them, but this is the one time a year where I feel like we get the best opportunity for them to respond. So, so push them now, push them hard, okay? Um, all right, I will, uh, I got to just finish up, get back to, uh, okay, the wanderer. Have you heard of getting sleep apnea rated because the back causes sleep almost exclusively on your back? I've heard of sleep apnea being caused by your back. Um, 
Let's see if we can do non-sleep apnea one to finish. Linwood Hurston, I am apprehensive about a new claim. I'm 90% filed TDIU over a year ago. I was in <coughs> the uh, VRE, so basically uh, the VA vocal rehab. When I got the review decision report qualified me for B TDIU, but d deferred to VRE, no VRE now, claim again. Whoa. Okay, so the VR, the voc rehab from the VA is good evidence. You know, it could be a good evidence for VA. It's, it's strong evidence, put it that way. If you're working or they say you can work, um, that's evidence, you know, that they're going to come out and use against you. If, the, if they say, look, we've done everything we can. We've tried to, re, you know, rehabilitate this, this soldier and we can't do it. That is strong evidence for you. But they're two separate uh, claim flows, okay? They're not. They're not done at this, the same time. So the TDIU, you need to be appealing that and pushing that on its own. Once you get the decision over here, if it's helpful to you, you throw it in there and say, hey, look, even your own people say I can't work. Uh, so, so one, even though they influence each other, they're not determinative. They're not one claim. The VE claim is not going to stop the IU claim. The IU claim is you know, not going to say, okay, we're giving you IU. Therefore, you know, you're never going to get a claim on this again. They still both have to give you decisions. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, uh, I, I'm going to be in DC all next week, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to present. I will um, I'll bring my camera. And if, uh, if I get a chance, it might be on Tuesday that I get to talk before I go into this conference. Uh, but I'm excited about it. Hopefully going to learn more. Uh, and, and again, I appreciate all y'all's questions. You, you know, I'm hoping that I give you information that, that can help, but you guys always give me information uh, to think about and, and frankly, new ways to help uh, help vets I see. So thank you so much. Thank you for your service. And we will see you here uh, sometime soon.